Now, props and locks on Fox 32 Chicago, presented by Bet River Sportsbook. Good Sunday morning and welcome to Props and Locks. I'm Caitlin Sharkey. Week 11 of the NFL season brings us a Bears bye week, but plenty of other games and bets to break down, courtesy of Bet River Sportsbook. Joining me every Sunday morning, VEASAN expert Danny Burke. And Danny, no Bears this week, so we begin with the NFC North leading Packers. Packers and Indy taking on the Colts. Indy favored by one and a half. Packers coming off that close win over Jacksonville last week. Over under at 51. Danny, I'm staying away from the spread here, leaning toward the under under considering the Colts defense. How do you break this one down? Kalen, the thing that was fascinating about this game is the Packers actually opened up as the favorite here as about a two and a half point favorite. So that's completely flipped. You saw the sharp money go toward Indy. And just because, like you mentioned, the Colts defense is astounding. And, and what the Packers have struggled against this year has been really good defenses. You saw what happened against the Buccaneers, who arguably have the best defense in the league. So I understand why this line shifted a little bit toward Indianapolis. I would slightly lean to them just because you have their great defense. Defense. You pair that with the Packers struggle themselves on defense and look I always joke about old man Rivers saying I don't really trust him but he did a really good job last Thursday when they're playing against the Titans so they've had ample time to prepare for this game longer than usual I think they're going to be able to move the ball in this spot now can the Packers do it consistently yes we know how good Aaron Rodgers is and he should be able to but is it going to be enough is he, he going to be able to do it constantly over this Colts great defense I'm not so sure so if I'm going with the straight up spread here I lean a little bit to the Colts, but like we always talk about, a great teaser opportunity with a short road dog here being the Packers. You tease them up six points, get them through the key numbers of three and seven, then you have the Packers at plus seven and a half, a way better spot. That's an angle I would look at in this spot. Absolutely. Moving on to another NFC North team, the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Vikings favored by seven coming off their win against the Bears. No arguing Minnesota is a hot team right now, riding a three-game win streak over under at 48 and a half. Dallas 0-6 against the spread in the last six road games. Danny, what's your lean here? Uh, we talked about teasers, and that's what I'm doing with this spot as well. Yes, the Cowboys are coming off a of bye week, but that doesn't really alter my mind whatsoever because this Dallas defense is still so bad. What improvements are they going to be able to make? In my opinion, none. And now you're getting this red-hot Vikings team like you mentioned. Dalvin Cook is probably going to go off once again. He was limited against the Bears, but that's just because of how good that Bears defense is. The Cowboys defense is a much different story and a lot more inferior than Chicago. So I don't really want to lay the with the Vikings here so that's why I'm teasing them down six points bringing them down to just a half point favor and all you need them to do is win the game so I think they're in a great spot here it doesn't really affect me that they're coming off that bye week because the bye week that the Vikings had a few weeks ago ever since then they've been a completely different team they've been on an absolute roll and I think they're going to continue to do that and play like the team they were touted to be in the preseason which is potentially the top of the NFC North so I think they rolled it in. Yeah it could be a big day for Cook and a long day for the Cowboys defense like you mentioned. Moving on to the Lions and Panthers. Carolina quarterback Teddy Bridgewater a game time decision on whether or not he plays with a knee injury. Detroit favored by one. They are without DeAndre Swift and Kelly Galladay. Matthew Stafford is questionable. I'm staying away from Detroit here. Danny, your thoughts here. I'm with you here, Caitlin, and it kind of sinks because I was looking forward to betting Detroit in the spot with the uncertainty of Teddy Bridgewater, but Stafford even was questionable. We're assuming he's going to go, but you talk about DeAndre Swift, you talk about Galladay, Amendola, all these guys are out for Detroit. You factor that in with going on the road. It's going to be a really tough spot here for Detroit, who is a team that really struggles putting it together for all four quarters. They have the talent there, but now some of that talent isn't even going to play. So I would be leaning toward taking the points with the home dog in Carolina here. Once again, perfect teaser opportunity, a home underdog, tease them up six points, plus seven and a half is a great spot. Also, you take a look at the total here at about 46 and a half, right around that range. This could be a lower scoring affair because of all the weapons that Detroit is missing. And the, Pat the Panthers defense really isn't that solid, but they show up when they need to. And Detroit's defense, yes, they've had their lapses too, but this could just be an ugly, slow paced type of game with all these injuries. But overall, I'd be looking at Carolina as the dog in this spot. I'm going to ask you about that over under. We've seen a lot of overs in this season so far with the NFL, but 46 and a half seems low, but are you safe to say that it will be a low scoring game. I can see it going under, but it's always scary going under. <laughs> 
It, it really is, and everybody jokes, Caitlin, because they've been saying unders are a sucker bet so far in NFL and college football, too, because the refs help out the offenses so much we see with these pass interferences and just every call they usually get toward their side, it's the advantage that way, and people love betting the overs. They love seeing points, so it is hard to do it, but there are certain opportunities when that is the sharper play, specifically in primetime games. You see a lot of under action by the sharper players because the public loves to root for points, and they typically go to the over, but for this game, it is a little bit lower so overall I'm staying away from it but would gravitate toward the under thinking it's going to be kind of one of those ugly games with all the banged up players. All right we shall see time for a quick break still more to come on props and locks as we continue with week 11 NFL action and as always you can place your bets at betrivers.com or using the bet rivers mobile app we're back after this. Welcome back to Props and Locks. I'm Caitlin Sharkey, joined by VEASAN expert Danny Burke. Danny, let's continue looking at some of the best bets and the odds of the week. Next up, the top teams in the AFC West, the Kansas City Chiefs and Raiders. KC laying seven and a half, over under here at 56 and a half. Las Vegas pulled off the upset win over the Chiefs already this season. I like the Chiefs, but I also like Vegas with the points looking at this spread, Danny. Completely agree with you here, Caitlin. Look, everybody's going to be on Kansas City here. They're coming off a bye week, and it's a revenge spot for what happened at home. Like you mentioned, they lost 40-32 to 32 the last go-around. So I think the Chiefs do get the win, and that's not shocking saying it because the Chiefs are one of the best teams in the league. But where it gets tricky, of course, is with that point spread. And the public's going to be all over Kansas City. So many tickets going on the Chiefs. But the thing is here, you get it over the key number of seven. You're getting seven in a hook if you look toward Vegas. And the Raiders probably don't get as much credit as they should offensively. They've been able to move the ball fairly consistently throughout the whole season. And this Chiefs defense probably isn't as good as the defense we saw in the latter half of the season last year. So I like taking the points with the Raiders here, if anything. The total, it's one of those spots that we were just talking about, Kalen. It seems like you wouldn't want to go under because of how good these offenses are, but it is still a little bit too high. So I'm staying away from the total. But if I'm playing anything, I'm taking the points here with the Raiders, who are 5-0 and ATS, their last five divisional games. All right, moving on to the Patriots, Texans. Texans catching two over under at 48 and a half, which seems on the low side, Danny. Do we like the over here? You know, I do, Caitlin, because the overs are 9-3 and three the last 12 matchups between these teams. And we talk about defenses that are inferior. The Patriots are certainly one of them. We like to look at the rankings in DVOA, which is another metric, to determine how good these teams are going to do. And the Patriots are dead last in defense. And the Texans are right there with them at the bottom half at about 28th, I believe. So the ball is going to be moving. We just have to assume that Cam is going to be able to do it throughout the whole game because we've seen this Patriots offense go through their lulls. But if they can move the ball, which I assume they will, I think this total goes over because Deshaun Watson has been carrying that offense. They've been fine. They just can't put it together for all four quarters. And the defense is what's been killing them. So I believe Deshaun will get the points up there. If you believe Cam can do it, then this total will go over. And that's what I believe will happen. In the AFC, the 6-3 and three Ravens hosting the 6-3 and three Titans. Baltimore lane six. Titans have lost three of their last four games. Haven't scored more than 24 points since week six. Looking at this matchup, Danny, do you like the spread, money line, or team total? You know, honestly, Kalen, I'm staying away from all of that. I like a prop in this spot, and it's Lamar Jackson passing yards 219 and a half. Now, I know everybody's probably freaking out. How could you bet Lamar Jackson over his passing yard props? He's only averaging 196 passing yards per game, but think what happened last week in that monsoon of a game. He had his second best passing performance, 243 yards, so he was still uh, able to sail way over that prop mark. And the Titans have allowed every opposing quarterback over this prop number in every game except week one where Drew Locke only got 216 passing yards. So this Tennessee defense is extremely vulnerable against the pass. If there's a game where Lamar Jackson is going to bounce back in the air, it's going to be this one. So take Lamar Jackson over 219 and a half passing yards. All right, I'll take your word for it. Taysom Hill to start in place of an injured Drew Brees and instead of Jameis Winston, the Saints taking on the Falcons. New Orleans, the four-point favorite Atlanta coming off a week 10 bye and their first win streak, so to speak, of the season after winning two straight. Going out on a limb here, Danny, I'd like Atlanta with the points. What's your lean? 
Yeah, I, I kind of go that way too, Kalen. And I'm really bummed that we don't get to see Jameis Winston here. We all kind of got robbed of that show, which was going to be awesome. But look, Taysom Hill is still exciting to watch as well. Uh, four is a little bit of a tricky spot here with New Orleans. I kind of agree with you, but just to be safe, I think I would tease up Atlanta here by six and a half points. So you get over the whole number of 10, you bring it up to 10 and a half. And I think the Falcons can certainly keep it close in that range. So that's how I would play that game. And finally, looking at the Monday night game, Tom Brady and the Bucks taking on the Rams. Tampa Bay laying four over under at 48 and a half. What do we think here, Danny? Well, Caitlin, we've seen the Bucs struggle in prime time a couple of times this season. Can they finally bounce back? I think they do. Look, the Rams were a sharp side that we leaned toward last week. They were coming off a of bye week, and that's where Sean McVay really thrives. Now you're going back-to-back -back weeks. You're in a normal schedule, and Tom Brady is not going to let it happen again on prime time, being getting embarrassed. I think the Bucs have a great shot at winning this game. I would lay the spread with Tampa Bay. I would also look under in this spot because Tampa Bay has one of the best defenses, and so do the Rams, which they don't get a lot of credit for. They're also have hit seven unders in their nine games so far. I like the under for Monday Night Football. All right, Danny, and before we go, are there any props you're looking at this week? My prop is how many weeks you're keeping that mustache or planning on keeping that mustache. <laughs> Well, it's the mustache magic, Caitlin. That's what I'm hoping for here. So if we go undefeated with our best bets, I'll keep it going. And if not, then maybe I'll shave it. I know some people are going to be rooting for one over the other. I can tell you which side my mom's rooting for, but I'm hoping we get an undefeated week. But I like Lamar Jackson over that 219 and a half passing yards. Tease down the Vikings in their game. And also I teased down the Chargers earlier this week against the Jets. But another interesting angle for that Green Bay Packers game, look at Aaron Jones over three and a half receptions. That could be a decent play as well. All right, thank you, Danny, and thank you for joining us on Props and Locks, brought to you by Bet Rivers Sportsbook. Join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Make sure you place those bets at betrivers.com. Fox kickoff Sunday is next.